How crazy has this season been for you? Uh, you guys started out 0-3. Very difficult. I think you guys were 0-9 in franchise history. Now you won five straight. How are you feeling right now? How how has the season up until this point, how has it felt? Um, good question, I gotta say. You know, the feeling's incredible. I had the I had a record, but it wasn't a good one. It was the longest streak in losses, nine. You were right. Uh, it was it was defeating, but you know I, the slingshot ways. We don't give up. We never have. We never will. You know whether we're down ten or we're down two, we don't give up. James, let me tell you. So after that third game, I said, listen, you know, we may be lost, but you know we got to win this one right here. This is a division game. We need to win this or we're out. We pulled through. We won, we tied the series, and from then on, uh, I just looked the match to the fire, James. Uh, and the rest of the team, they carried it away. Gumby, incredible player. He has a couple home runs. Great hitter. Madison even has one. Great hitter. We have incredible pitching. I think the best bullpen in this league, one of the deepest, uh, with Matt, uh, pitching, the pitching magician Madison at the helm. We have Heidi. No home run, Heidi, because she hasn't given up a home run, folks. So, you know, I think overall this season is crazy. I love it. How are you looking to improve your game in the playoffs? What have you been doing to improve it? Has it been like a mental mindset? What have you been trying to do to get ready for the playoffs? Um, for the playoffs, James, uh, first of all, you're right. You know, I haven't been, been the best on the team by far. But then again, a team, is, there's no I in team here. And I know I got to get the mindset of um, never giving up and just to push forward, you know, get solid hits. I, I can't go for, I don't want to go for them deep homers all the time. I just got to be consistent. I think that's that's the main thing is consistency. It's like mashed potatoes. You want to be consistent. So my hitting's got to be like a nice bowl of mashed potatoes. Consistent, James. Uh, for the Harpers, I would have to say, uh, they're hitting. You can't miss their hitting. They got some great hitters. Uh, Devin Sleesman, incredible. I mean, just up the bat. Doesn't even have to move the hip. He just all arm. Wow. He's great hitter. Uh, Merle Schumer, they got in the first round. The improvement is crazy. He he improved so much from last year. Change I've seen. Um, even Merle, surprised. he even hitting pretty good this year also. I mean, the hitting, they're getting it down. I, I got to respect that on the team. And Devin out of nowhere pitching. Um, I got to respect that too. He's just been a great pitcher. But on our team, I think there's one thing we need to stress is um, consistency and uh, just keep it on going. When you hit it, don't stop. You got to run. You just, whether or not it's, if it's a fly ball, keep running. They might drop it. We had, we are plagued by a mistake, in one of our games due to that and just minor fielding issues. Uh, but compared to the first week, we cleaned the fielding up like like nothing, like no tomorrow. Um, yeah, we just got a, a little bit on the fielding and consistent hitting, and we'll be, we will be fine in these playoffs. What are you trying to focus on for your lineup? Are you strategizing a certain way? Are you, gonna, are you going to like roll with your same lineup you've had the whole year? Are you going to try to change some things around the field? Like what's your, I guess if you can give us not all of your strategy, but a little bit of what you guys are planning on in the Slingshots organization, coming into the semifinal game. I got you. Um, yeah, for strategy wise, uh, I think for the game, we're gonna, we earlier on in the year, the hitting was, um, the lineup was different than it is now. Uh, we'd spread it out a little bit and now we're stacking the top more, which I think um, we might do against the Harpers here. Um, I just like how that's been going. And then as far as pitching and fielding wise, it's going to be pitching. I like how we're doing it, um, getting everyone a chance. It's subbing them, but at the same time, uh, we still have our stars out there. So that and then pitching, uh, all I got to say is you'll see on the field. That's a surprise for the Harpers. Yes, sir. I'm not trying to jump ahead of this semifinal game. I know you guys are super focused on this game alone because you need to win this in order to make it to the title series. But... You can't overlook the pennant hoops. What, what about their game is their strength, and what do you guys worry about with that organization as playoff time comes or if playoff time's coming? What do you guys 
how are you strategizing against them as well? Well, the question to that, I think, is what is their weakness? They got so many strengths. They got a pitching, they got a, the most hated pitcher in the league, as people call him, but let me tell you, he can throw a ball like crazy. Um, they got hitting, their captain, Chase Prince, is, I think, a better hitter than Devin Sleesman. Stats wise, you may not see it, but I would say that Chase is better than Devin. Um, they got tons of other people. It's Bubba, first year in the league, insane player. Uh, Anthony, he's consistent. Uh, I believe it was 15 or 16 of 18 hits. You don't get much more consistent than that. That's that's really good, especially with the uh, strike zone, this turnaround, how it changed um, hitting and pitching. Um, so yeah, it's hard to point out a, 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 a weakness, but I guess one you could say is they, you know, confidence is good, but if they get too cocky, they could screw themselves. Mistakes. You don't want to watch out for those mistakes last year. That's what cost the Pentateuchs. They were up eight to three, and then Harper's came back out of nowhere. One of the best games I've televised, and won nine eight. It was it was an insane game, but mistakes killed them, and then it just was a snowball effect. Uh, they just gotta brush the mistakes off and keep going. So how how excited are you personally to finally be in the CJC Ball Show? Like how excited are you to be in the playoffs this year? It's uh, it's it's like excitement is almost too real, James. It's um, you know, I'll give you an example here. It's like you know Christmas, like a little kid comes out to a present. Well, that's me coming out to this appearance. I've been I've waited a whole year, lost nine games in a row. I felt like I was out. I'm gonna be honest with you, but you just rally back, and the feeling's incredible to be with such a great team. I can't stress it enough how much it's. It's an effort from all of us. It's not me at all. It's, you know, it's the team. And I have such great players around me, personnel. The fans have been great. Um, it's just, I'm so happy and so, I'm, I'm so ready for this playoffs to come around to show them that we aren't the same thing sought from last year. And I think you can tell that from this year. Any follow-up questions? All right, that, that was Andrew. We just thank you for your time. And Thank you there, James. It's been a pleasure. Um, you know, you're at the top seat here, and in this wild card game, you have the Why Harpers. So wild. <laughs> you could calm down. <laughs> Go ahead. You have the Harpers and the, and the uh, Slingshots. Now, if you are to go to the finals with any of those two teams, which team would you go with and why? Oh, wow. Um, I'll be honest, both teams are just spectacular. And it, I can't just say, you know, I'd rather play one team. Because if you look at both teams, they both have different strengths that kind of um, are tough to go up against. I mean, you look at the slingshots, they're hot right now. I mean, they have the, all the momentum going into the playoffs, and that's what you want. Um, but they have all the momentum. Their bats are on fire. Their pitching has been lights out, very difficult to uh, hit, especially that last game we played against them. But, um, but yeah, they, I mean, their pitching, staff has been great their bats are on fire they're on a roll then you look at the harpers they just have the, they still have the reigning 2019 mvp Devin sleesman you know when you pitch against him you can put your perfect pitch and somehow he figures out how to hit it um so i mean we have tori coming down the steps right now oh, that's our, <laughs> <laughs> this is our pr lady um, but uh yeah so i mean with both teams it's difficult i uh, to be honest with you i just want to win the title series i really don't focus on the opponent Whoever we play, I'm going to try my best to uh, just do my homework, strategize, and try to try to play at my best to uh, win a title series for this organization. That's great. Good, Good Dave. I'm not going to say the curse is back, but mm. you had two straight losses, and I would have to say they were due to a couple of errors. What is what is the Pentateuch uh, mindset going into playoffs after a bumpy road? So we're just, um, yeah, I mean, last season, the two curse, that was, a, uh, it hurt a lot. I still think about that loss to the Harpers last year, but, um, you know, I'll be honest with you, those last two games were just lackadaisical. I think we had the first seed in hand coming into the last week. We were kind of just taking it easy, to be honest with you. I mean, we still wanted to win, but um, I think we were just too lackadaisical in our approach to the game. And I, you know, we were in the dugout and I was, we were just yelling at each other, like, are we, here to play or we're here to win so I just think we were just a little bit off our game in the last week of the season but I'm hoping with the playoffs that especially with that buy that buy game um, we'll have a chance to kind of take our time 
watch the semifinal game, see who's going to see who wins that game, kind of strategize, see what's going on in that game. Um, I think that'd be benefit to us in the title series. And um, so we're, we're essentially we're just this is a new season. The playoffs, the old season's done with. This is everybody's O and O again. So our focus is to just take one game at a time. We just need to win two games, and we have the title series. So we just had a uh, incoming report that your left-handed pitcher slash first baseman Jim Mason is not going to be attending the playoffs. Um, now, be honest with it. How big of a hit is this, and how are you going to fill uh, fill someone in for that position or strategize to fill that spot that he left? Yeah, I mean, I'll let I'll let the when our general manager comes up today, I'll let him kind of speak more about that. But as far as like with my role on the team as a as a pitcher. Um, you know, this whole season, if you look at what we've done defensively, Jim's been a big part of it. I mean, I think, I think he's a, a gold hand nominee for this season. I know he'll get my vote probably for that. But um, he's, he's worked really well with me as far as that communication. A lot of, like when balls get, get to me, I, I know I can trust him to catch it. Or if I know there's a pop up um, towards first base, he's going to catch it. So. It's going to be a big hit, but I think we have the personnel on our team to fill in. It's next man up in our organization. It's always has been, always will be. Um, just fill in the spots. And, you know, our mission's not a personal vendetta. We're not trying to win awards personally, but we're trying to win one award as a team, and that's that title series. So uh, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll find someone to fill that spot, and we're going to keep pushing forward. That's all we can do at this point. We can't hide and cry about, um, you know, someone just being out on our team. It is a big hit, but we just got to keep going. With you uh, cl um, claiming the first seed in this um, playoffs, that's huge. And uh, how big of a impact do you think that's going to be having home field advantage in all the in um, your first game in the title series, and then the third if it goes to that level? Um, how big of a an advantage is that for you in these games? Oh, it's a huge advantage. So that's why we fought all season. It's been a long season. Um, I know for me, it's been very long and it's a very strenuous season, but that's that was our goal the whole year. We just thought if we could try to get that first seed, it's a huge advantage just because, you, like I said before, you get to watch the semifinal game, see how those teams are operating, what their lineups are, and it gives you an advantage in that regard to have a, um, to kind of um, strategize on the fly as you're watching that. And then also gives you a little bit of a rest kind of get settled in and then also you get home field advantage which is big so if it, if it got, does come down to the final game three we'll have the home field advantage on our side so it's a very big thing it was our goal all season uh, we were very happy to accomplish that but we got to kind of put that aside as well we can't get too caught up on achieving that we need to now just focus on taking one game at a time and winning that title series I think if we do that if we play our game take one game at a time um, we'll do well and We'll bring that championship back to the organization. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jeff. Well, a lineup that doesn't have a lot of depth mm -hmm. in it, uh, team-wise, uh, does it put more pressure on you if some players are not able to attend these championship games uh, on the mound? Does it have any effect with the way you play? I, I mean, personally, on the mound, I don't think it does. Um, just because I can control how the game goes if I do my job well. Now, if I don't do my job well, then yeah, it, you depend more on your fielders to make the plays, which is totally fine. But for me personally, um, I want to go out there and do my job to where I'm in control of the seat. I'm in control of where this team goes defensively. I think that's my job. Um, now, as far as the depth, if it's a hot one, if it's hot outside, um, and you know physically exerting ourselves that's when depth comes into play uh, so it's just going to be more of a mental mindset on our players who are out there to kind of push through that tiredness um, that exhaustion and keep going um, and then i guess with the batting lineup it just depends on i guess where our our batting is like if, i know for myself right now i'm a little bit, little bit of a skid the last two games so in saying that, if I would continue, having that extra person does help, if, especially to kind of pick up your, the batting for your team. So, but I think personally as a pitcher, it doesn't really affect my game. I, need, I just need to focus on what I'm doing and I know I can control 
or defensively where we go. Uh, your pitching was great, but your batting was all oh, right. Wow. And I gotta say, uh, you know, the fans are wondering, uh, are you doing anything in the off season to work on your batting? And if so, what are you doing? And how are you gonna clean up your batting per se in the championship to come here? I just can't. Where do we get questions like this? I don't know. I mean, I, I like to keep a positive mindset with my questions, and I hope people can keep positive mindsets with their questions. But you know, I, I, up until this last, um, up until this last week, um, week four, I thought I was doing well. I mean, I had two home runs. I was above uh, six twenty five, I think, batting average. So I thought I was doing well. Um, had seven RBIs. So I, I thought my hitting up to that point was good. Um, now the last week, yeah, I struggled, and I'm I'm trying to work through that now with some BP, regular BP I have. It's my wife. <laughs> some regular BP I have, we've been having lately, but um, yeah, it's a nasty question, and I don't know why you would ask that. Um, I mean, no. But uh, it's okay. And if, in the off season, yeah, I mean, work, I'll work on my BP. I work on my BP often, so um, yeah, let's try to keep nasty caught comments down but you can, go ahead you can ask them go ahead all right uh since your uh backup left-handed pitcher will be unavailable has it been brought to your attention will you be the uh only pitcher or do you have a plan as far as Pentateuch who will be a fill-in for if you happen to get tired uh yeah to my understanding i talked to the gm weekly and um he informed me that i will be starting in the title series so i'm assuming i'm the pitcher all the way now i'm hoping i've been working on that my game will be solid enough to where i can stay in up to three games if i need to um i'm not sure i don't want to speak on the general manager's behalf about the backup situation but um i know that if i bring my game like i said earlier i i'm in the driver's seat it all depends on how i play defensively and where we go um so yeah i mean it, I just know I'm starting, and like I said, I'm taking game by game. Does anyone have any more questions? All right, thanks everyone. Talk, you about, talk about your season up to this point. I mean, you're a rookie, you've had a really great season. Um, but I think right now you're tied for first overall in, the, in home runs. But talk about how this season has been for you as a rookie coming to this league and just the success you've had. Um, I take it play by play. Uh, the minors, I was working real hard, got the call up to come up here to be a slingshot. I, uh, you know. I was told my role for the team and I take it one play at a time. Don't try to be a star, but try to make the routine plays, the routine outs, let the team do its job. You there. So your personal focus, I mean, we, we talked about how, like right now you are tied with the reigning MVP, Devin Sleeson, from last season in home runs. Are you are you at all looking at that home run record for the seat or being the home run leader this season at the end of the playoffs? Like, is that on your radar at all, or are you just focused on winning? I'd be lying if I said it wouldn't be on my radar. Of course, I want it, but it's not my main focus. My main focus is when I get up to bat to get on base. If I get that home run, it's like sprinkles on my ice cream. Oh. But yes, it is on my radar, but not my only focus. Who else do you think um, was a major contributor to the success of the slingshots this season? That's tough. Uh, I don't believe one player uh, dictates the entire team, but if I had to pick one player that I think impacted a majority of the team uh, would be our pitching Heidi Mason. Uh, we had, we had a couple talks before a couple games, and we wanted to uh, just pitch for contact, uh, nothing crazy, and let us do our job in the field. And I think she does an awesome job at that. And the rest of the team, they, they do their job. They, they get the outs. Next question. What's your personal focus this is a two-part question what's your what's your individual focus coming into the playoffs against the Harpers as a left fielder and then my second part of the question is how does that how does your individual 
mindset as left fielder play into the big picture for the team defensively? Uh, my focus will just take one out at a time. I, uh, I've noticed that the Harpers are a big pooling team. They pull a lot of the balls, so I try to do my best at keeping the home runs and the fly balls off the ground. Uh, the big picture, ooh, just taking it one step at a time. Not trying to, not trying to go too fast to where errors are happening. To throwing the ball around, just want to take our time, know what's going on before something happens. Take it easy. You know, this uh, this wild card game you're going in is against uh, the Harpers, which happened to be a divisional rival. Mm -hmm. We played them for a while. Um, currently two to one playing them this season and one's to losses. What is your strategy going into this game as far as hitting and what do you think your team needs to do to overcome the Harpers? This oh, good round? question. Uh, it's not the team I wanted to be going up against in the playoffs. But we have seen them three times now, and we have beat them twice. Uh, hitting, uh, try to keep it on the ground. Uh, they got a lot of speed in the outfield, and their pitching is just spot on. Devin has, I believe, the most strikeouts in the league. Unbelievable. As a team, I think we just, we just need to small ball per se not we don't need to be superstars and rack up our home run stats we just need to get singles and single score runs in the black I, I know you're a rookie and everything but i'm sure you've seen some footage or just heard of i guess the genesis division rivalry from last season but from this season what you've seen so far how much has that division rivalry grown uh, i mean last year Compared in the league, the Genesis division was pretty rough. Um, combined records, the team was three and nine in regular season play. But this year, I mean, they're really competitive, very competitive, both teams. But how much has that slingshot and Harper's rivalry grown uh, this year? Um, as a first time player, I I've noticed that it's it's uh it's rough. It's highs are highs whenever we're we're doing good and lows are lows because of course it's your rival. You don't want to you don't want to make a mistake against the rival. Uh, but our our team does a real good job of picking each other up whenever we're down. Uh, but the rivalry itself, it's it's pretty high. The stakes are high. What are you doing now? Playoffs are a week away. What are you doing mentally? to get ready for your uh, your playoff debut? Um, just trying to stay healthy. Just trying to not overexert ourselves. It's a big, it's a big game. Uh, it's not gonna be easy. The last three games against the Harpers were not easy. Um, just take it, play at a time. I think that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank wow. you very much. I'm just here because I have to. Oh. Okay. Any questions? You there. Jim Mason, your left-handed pitcher, will be out. Is that true? And if that is true, as the general manager, how are you preparing to fill that spot? Like, what what, what are you it, – does it affect your team's strategy? Or is it just next person up? What's – I mean, how are you – how is that affecting you? What's your, what's your next step in that? It was next player up. But other news, I got my star left fielder isn't coming either, Bubba McCormick, because of a tournament. So it kind of made my plans harder because I could have put Anthony at first. Now I have to put him in right field. But it's going to be Nets player up, see who can show up on my team and prove who they can be at the position. You there. Uh, this is huge news, uh, Brandon McCormick not being able to attend up playoffs uh batting and even fielding he played a major role for the Pentateuchs. uh as a gm what steps are you taking for the team to uh fill that void 
We don't know that. That's undisguided. <laughs> <laughs> With a week leading to playoffs. That I just got the news today about him not showing up. So if I get the news, I'll let you know. Why do you seem a little hostile? Hostile? <laughs> We're just trying to do our job. Yeah, why are bring, you attacking the We're media? trying to bring our stories to the fans. Why are you being so hostile? We're just trying to ask you questions. Are you upset about these moves? No, I'm just forced to be here. Okay. <laughs> but any questions? More questions. Um, with all these, you know, with all these negatives aside, how happy are you to be in the title series this year? I know last year you were so close. You guys dropped the ball, literally and figuratively. But how do you feel right now as general manager of the Pentateuch? You worked really hard to build this team. How do you feel about being in the title series, having a chance to win that championship? Now, I feel very happy because... Last season, I kind of ruined it for my team, dropping the ball that we could have gotten out and we could have been in the title series versus the Jaywalkers. But I fell short because of the curse. But I'm feel happy. I'm about first seed. We were lots of days cool in the last day game. But we're going to step up. We're going to show the slingshots or the Harpers. You just mentioned it, the last of days of coolness of the last two weeks. Before that, you were on fire, six straight. Um, the fans just want to know quickly, um, what is your attitude going into these games against either the Harpers or the Slingshots, depending on that game, uh, and how are you mentally preparing for this upcoming title championship series, the first in the Pentateuch's history? What I'm looking for the pitching, because that's what this whole league has been about, is the pitching. Of all the teams, they had great pitching staff, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking, my team should come 100%. Not showing up maybe, but we're gonna play. The other teams will have to match us. That's the only key advantage for us right now. All right, I asked uh, your fellow teammate, uh, James Yezik, and I'm planning to ask you, uh, your outlook as far as the curse, I'm not saying it's back, but you did have two losses and it's not, it's not positive push to go into the playoffs. You're a uh, bye week, we'll call her. Uh, are you doing anything with the team to uh, reignite that spark to come back hot against the upcoming opponent? Some of our, okay, we've been having off the field practices weekly. So batting, help batting, help pitching. What we all need to work on catching balls on the fly. We did last week, grounders. So we're getting ready for the upcoming game. So no one knows who you're going to play in the title That's series. Country. I mean, it's either going to be the Harpers or the Slingshots. I mean, we know that. So could you break down both both squads and what their strengths are? And if you could just select one person on our team that caught has caught your eye this season, that would be great. Okay, I'll start with the Slingshots. Player, outfield, outstanding. Andrew really stepped up. He actually can catch a ball. Get a gold hand, maybe. Oh. Oh, Matt's rookie stepped up. Their outfield to stand. We try to play small ball when we reverse him. Pitching, Madison Mason and Heidi. Heidi really Madison caught Duke. my eye. Oh, yeah. A, <laughs> no, just really. Heidi really caught my eye this season pitching. She has a shutout versus the Harpers every time. Will she be pitching against them this game? We will see. Harpers. There's a team pitching Devin, really outstanding, hard to hit against. Outfield, they just got Allen, really improved their outfield. I'm just not relying on one person, but Devin is the key guy on the Harpers that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, we were uh, wondering, uh, as far as last year into this year, uh, what do you think was your biggest improvement of the team, and why? Fielding. That's all I wanted this season was fielding. Anyone can hit the ball, any, but it's hard to find good fielders. So I drafted for a fielding team, and so far my team has been great on fielding-wise. Uh, there have been rumors that you have said that, in your opinion, Brandon McCormick was the MVP of the uh, Pentateuchs. 
Could you uh, elaborate more on if that is true, why you think that? And if it isn't true, who do you think would be the player that stepped up the most and was a big deciding factor? I do think Brandon was my MVP this season. He has five. <laughs> <laughs> he carried my team with hitting and fielding. Pitching, don't get me wrong, he did do great. But my feel, I, <laughs> I think Bubba stepped up for being a rookie this season. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I got a quick question for you here from uh, Jake the Snake here, the fan. He was wondering um, whether or not, uh, for the off-field purposes, he was wondering if there was rumors of you signing possibly James Yedick or even Brandon McCormick as your five-star. Um, if that's true, uh, can you elaborate on it? And if not, then do you have any plans you can disclose for the off-season at this time? I'm not disclosing Jake any of my place, players in the off-season. I might take a shot in the dark for another player on the team or just <laughs> stick with players on my team. Well, See when time comes. Good. Wow. There were uh, <laughs> <laughs> there were rumors that uh, you you were thinking about possibly trading Felicity. Um, we obviously know the trade did not happen, but was it true? And was there a plan behind it? I was thinking about it in the future, but as I keep thinking about it, I needed, she did great for me this year and I kept her. She's probably not gonna stay with me in the off season, but rumors have been hearing about the Harpers. It seems like you're losing players left and right, especially in this right. time of the year, it's that's it's a bad time to have that happen. I mean, you lost your left-handed pitcher, Jim Mason, first baseman, doing great, gold hand nominee, we believe. Um, possibly Brandon McCormick. So, do you wish you would have made a trade at the deadline to kind of solidify the depth on your team? Or are you kind of, are you fine with where your team's at right now with those two players out? I'm fine where my team was. I didn't know about them until after the trade deadline, so I really can't do anything about that. I was happy with my team with the trade deadline coming up because we were hot until we lost our last two games. How have you grown as a general manager? compared to last season to this season? From last season to this season, uh, I've been trying to get off the field a lot. Like, I'm trying to put my players on the field and let me get off to watch, watch my team, see what's, they're going, what's going wrong to improve for the future. Because that's all I want to do is improve my team for the future, build for the future. That's why I traded back in the first round this year for the second pick to build up. And I got a steal with Brandon McCormick. So I'm going to build for the future. So I want to, I've been, from last season to this season, we really improved on fielding. Hopefully we can do that moving on. All right. Last year, the Jaywalkers, they went undefeated. This year, they struggled a little bit, partly to do with player participation. But next year, having a high draft pick, do you think the management on that team will be something to really look out for uh, heading into next year's season. Yes, because looking at how he drafted, his attendance didn't show up. Let's see. I know he does not like to trade, rumors I've heard. He will not trade at all. But we will see how he drafts in the upcoming season. I'm not going to talk on his behalf. But do you expect us to believe that? I mean, we've seen yeah. the stats and we've heard things. you expect us to believe that he's not going to make moves? To try to better his squad? Is that what you're saying? I heard rumors of slingshots. Do you think he's not going to do anything? <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Let me talk. <laughs> I heard r rumors against the slingshots organization guy. and the jaywalkers about potential trade, but the GM said he doesn't like to trade personally. Will he make the moves in the next season? Will, time will come. It kind of goes back to the jaywalkers. is a good topic. They have a lot of cap space coming up in the off season which makes them have options you know
do you think that they're going to make a lot of big pushes for big name players? Or do you think they're going to try to build from within with the draft and like an organization and their minor league system? I think they're going to go out and find players from other teams because you won't be able to sign Joe Trump. So that was a big name, but he really didn't show up as much as we planned on in the league. And from the point standpoint, you can get one player from our team, so he can either stack it up on a five star or try work up. With your pick up in free agency, Anthony Lowry. Now some fans are a little skeptical, but um, he happens to probably be the most consistent hitter this season for 16 for 18 hits. Um, how happy are you with that progress? And um, where is he going to be playing at, considering the two injuries that set you back a little bit? Are you going to move him out of position, do you think, or keep him where he's been at? First, we're going to start ball hitting. It feels great to have a first guy coming up, hit, getting on base every single time. Could we can? He's an inch closer getting us to a run to start it off. Then fielding, I have no clue where I'm going to put him yet. He might be at first, he might be at right, maybe, maybe at mitts because both teams are pull hitters, so. What's your mindset going into the title series? Like, what do you think it's gonna take for you to win, no matter who you play? What's your mindset, and then what are you looking to do? I'm gonna take one pitch at a time. And my team, we're gonna go aggressive. We're gonna, what? No, you're good. What? <laughs> okay. Good. No. I'm gonna do do aggressive. Go ahead. I'm gonna do aggressive. Our team won't go hard. Hopefully, or we do 100% this game. Not lots of data will give us our all. All right. Uh, you said your uh, game plan is gonna be aggressive. Um, right. Without Brandon and without Jim, who who are you hoping steps up to really fill a gap here? Hopefully, James Yezik and the GM, myself, me. And we were slacking off on the hitting. Our hitting has been off the last two games. But hopefully, we can step up. Pitching wise, he's been good. Maybe we can do a shutout one game close, but fell short. But hopefully, we can do it. Hey, any more questions? Or? Nope. Last question for you. <laughs> nope. We're done. What were your uh, thoughts on the 2020 uh, media day press conference? A minus. <laughs> Pretty good. Sad that I was forced to be here. What about what about no, the Harpers were that done. showing? You were done. The Harpers. Oh, I know. No Jay Walkers. No Harpers. What does that say about Where's their character the and their organization? The Where's the commitment? What does it say about their organization and their character? Nope. <laughs> All right.